Mary's Magnificat, Mary's Song of Joy, is a beautiful entrance into Christmas Eve and expecting Christ's birth. I want to take us a step back, though, because to understand joy, we understand it best when there's loss, when there's sorrow, when there's fear, when there's anger, when there's anything but joy. And to enter that period and, and Mary's eruption of joy, I want us to think about our seniors. Because in today's world, they are the people that the way our culture is built experience the most loss. Because once you retire, you lose your status. And this world of ours is built around work and productivity. It means that when I go and visit Dot Huber and hospice, all she can say to me is, why doesn't God just take me? I'm such a burden because I can't do anything. I don't want to be a burden anymore. There are plenty of other ways that we could do this. The time that she had with Phyllis and her daughter and the stories and the passing on of all of the hard-earned wisdom from all of the bad days that they've been through and can pass on so that we can maybe skip that particular bad day at least. But the way that our culture has chosen to do it largely is not that way. And so there is a loss of status when we give up working. And, and who knows how all of the rest of the losses come. Sometimes they tumble way too quickly. Sometimes they come slowly, thankfully. But there are losses after losses. Because at some point, we lose some of our freedom because we can't go everywhere we want to go. We can't remember everything we want to remember. We can't move the way we want to move. I'll never forget my grandfather still at 92 playing on the tennis courts, but there wasn't the joy anymore that there used to be. It was anger. Like I heard him under his breath, pick up your feet, stupid. So angry that he couldn't get his body to move the way that he wanted it to move. And talking to me about taking showers in the morning because that was the only way. He's like, they're therapeutic now, Kate. Like, it's the only way I can get going in the morning is to soak up this hot water and get everything working again. That's a loss. And there's a loss of finances, as I've been talking in some of my visits of going into nursing homes and places that are assisted living and places that you're cared for. You turn all of your finances over to them. And you don't have that access and that power and that decision-making capability anymore. And that's a loss, too. And when you lose the keys to the car, <laughs> and the ability to decide when to go, wherever you want to go, whenever you want to go. And that's not even to get to the losses of friends, of my other grandfather who was living and saying, Kate, it's just not so much fun anymore because all my friends are gone. And to feel that lost every time you go to share a piece of joy or good news, and having less and less people to call that you know would know exactly what you're talking about and be able to celebrate with you. There's a lot of loss in that season. And it sits heavy. And that's heaviness is what I want us to remember one, for empathy's sake, and to be better people. But two, also the way that we enter the Christmas story. Because this is a sense of loss that Jesus came to be present in. It's not this exact sense, right? It doesn't translate exactly for Mary, but she wouldn't have been able to move the way she wanted to or go wherever she wanted to whenever she wanted because she was under an occupied power. And so whenever she go somewhere, if they even had enough money to go, there would be Roman checkpoints along the way. There would be extra taxes to be paid just to get through. 
So freedom wasn't a part of her world. Mobility was limited and censored. And all of that memory wouldn't have necessarily been there because she wouldn't have even had the chance to go to school in the first place. She would have been illiterate. And then there is the loss of status for her as well because her worth would have been wrapped up in marrying and having children and she got pregnant before she was married. And so, Joel, in that honor-shame society mentioned to us about and Joseph modeling and how to do, this is the moment where all of that shame is heaped on Mary and on Joseph. And they lose whatever place they had in their community. This is the world, this is the loss that Jesus comes to, that Jesus is born into. And when Mary's soul bursts forth into song, it's not that the world around her and all the loss that she has endured has changed, except all of it has. Nothing has changed and everything has changed because there is hope that she has found. There is an angel who has come to tell her that not only God knows she's alive and exists, but that God favors her and has chosen her for a journey and for a gift to the world. There's a moment there of connection and of relationship and of care that changes everything. And that's the joy that I want us to find. That's the weird mystery of salvation that can only be experienced because there's no word to describe, right, how Mary found salvation in that moment. It's not that she got to learn how to read and write. It's not that all of her financial troubles were solved. I have tried for this sermon so long to research this fact to confirm it, but I have read somewhere that the level of taxation under the Roman Empire was around 80 to 90 percent of people's incomes. Do you? And and so, it's a huge chunk when we talk about the level of limitation that's been placed on and the level of hopelessness of not being able to get out from under anything and the power that is over you. That hasn't changed. It hasn't changed that all of a sudden her family and friends are accepting her and clicking their heels for joy that she's pregnant. None of this has changed except everything in her has changed and that's the unexplainable miracle of salvation that comes to meet us in our loss and to transform it in a way that it's no longer a burden of shame and to something to be rightfully angry about, but in some inexplicable divine power, all of that shifts when it meets God's love and God's power. And so this joy that bursts forth from Mary comes because she went through everything else. It's not because she avoided loss. It's not because she and her life skipped over life, loss and God answered her prayers and took loss out of the equation of her life. It's because she accepted it, not on her own, but in the power of God's love. Let it be with me according to your will. Not according to your will, I'm gonna do my best scurrying over here to live up and to obey all in my own power, but according to your will in the terms of your God's favor resting upon me and giving me the power 
to do this, giving me new eyes to see, loss transformed, giving me new ears to hear, new heart to feel, giving me a way through. There are lots of stories like this in the Bible. This is Job's story as well as he angrily demands God answer him and the wrong done to him. And God never answers for the losses that he endured. But God does widen his lens in a way that those losses are transformed into not only a liability, but dare I say blessing. Can losses be a way that our hearts are left tender and are able to receive God's joy? It makes no sense, I know, on the one hand, except on the other hand, it is all the sense. It is gospel sense. This is the coming of the Lord. This is the good news that the angels proclaim in their rounds, fear not. What would happen if we as people could follow Mary and fear not the losses that life brings to us, but to place them in God's love, in God's hope, in God's peace, in God's joy, so that our souls, like Mary, can tell out God's word that we can see unnumbered blessings, that those blessings that that favor found can give our hearts voice, can give our souls power to point to paths made straight before us, the highway of the Lord, so that we can taste God's coming and God's promise. May there be joy for each and every one of us because God knows we need joy. Maybe we can trust God, practice trusting God enough to trust that that joy can and does come from even the losses. May we fold all of who we are into God's love, peace, hope, and joy. And may that joy set us free. Amen.